Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name's Max and I'm the host of this channel. A big warm welcome to my new viewers. Just remember to subscribe to me and like this video if you enjoy my content. A big thank you always goes out to my patrons. And um, of course, now that we're into the end of year series, the Autumn Nations series and the Rugby Championship is over and done with, I finally get to review countries other than my own, New Zealand. And you guys, you have got what you voted for. I'm reviewing the Irish series versus South Africa, a big 80 minutes. Goodness me, this test match. Um, as everyone's saying, it was a bit of a classic. I thought that South Africa would probably get the upper hand thanks to their power game, but perhaps just raw power is no longer going to cut it in world rugby. Um, a lot of people have been comparing it more to an arm wrestle than a football game as of late, which is probably a fair comment, but perhaps the um, flair and the brilliant attack is starting to find its way back into the um, into the world once again. Now the audiences are turning up to um, be crowd members once again. So first off, I'm going to um, go over how the teams got their points on the board, and um, after that, I'll review some match stats. Probably um, just give my general thoughts and things like that. Hopefully, it won't be too long as I'm very tired from um, not getting sleep because I was up to watch all these games. So first off, for the first Springbok penalty. And um, we got a fair bit of insight into how their attack functions under pressure with Damien Willems at a 10. So we're going to do a bit of a um, look at that one. After 15 phases, they're inside Ireland's 22, and we see a big error from Damien Willems. Hendricks goes wide off the ruck to Peter Steph Dutoy as Visa is in a good place to bind to the ruck. Ireland have fallen for what seems to be a decoy runner, but Damien Willems is not wide enough for Dutoy to successfully make the pass. We see Willems are between Dutoy and Stephen Kitsoff, but if he was standing here instead, outside Kitsoff, Damien Dialendi can realistically take the ball into contact and make a significant gain in metres, though the try isn't on because Colby also isn't wide enough either. As Dutoy makes the pass, Colby appears to be drifting wider, but as Willems hasn't, he's now been cut off from passing wider by Tyg Furlong. As Furlong is a prop, Willems is only able to gain about 3 metres. Dutoy makes a pick and go, though he could have scored if the previous phase was successful. As Stuart McCloskey enters the breakdown from the side, South Africa get the advantage in their 17th phase of attack. Hendricks are desperately offloads to Willemser who prepares a cross kick. We're going to freeze frame though because Kurt Lee Aronza, however, is right here next to Willemser, not out wide on the wing. We then cut to the wide shot to see Mac Hansen being the closest player to touch, while Aronza is halfway between the touch line and the goalposts. The bounce of the ball does work in South Africa's favour, but Willems' kick to a player who isn't there botches an almost certain try as we now have to consider the huge amount of momentum South Africa had in the tight channels before Willems made this kick. As this is the seventh minute, Willemser still takes a three and gets South Africa on the board, but these two little wee mistakes possibly come back to haunt South Africa. The reason for this coming back to haunt South Africa is because Willemse has a really terrible miss at goal um, in another stage of the, of the first half rather, and Sia Khaleesi I think after this almost felt like a neglect in confidence towards Willemse, so they were taking the touchline far more than taking the three South Africa. So Colby's yellow carded at some stage in the first half as well, so the halftime score after a few more penalties for both teams ends up being 6-6, six to six. but in the 46th minute it all opens up 
and the wonder tries start to come into the equation of the test match. As we can see the moves before the try beginning, we see Peter O'Mahony lifted in the line out by Porter and Ryan so that the weight of some of Ireland's heaviest players can be used to get go forward as Kitsoff and Itzabeth, um, South Africa's heaviest players are in the middle of South Africa's line while the very top heaviest player, Franz Malherber, is quite close to them. As we move over a few more frames, we see South Africa's pack engage Ireland's lifters as O'Mahony is brought down, hoping to stop the Irish source of ball there and then. What we see behind O'Mahony though is Doris and Byrne entering from the side, though legally with Bell in position to go in behind Van der Fleer. As they all enter the mall, Josh Van der Fleer gets surrounded by these three teammates so that South Africa have no legal means in which to win the turnover. Sheehan enters the mall and we immediately see South Africa try to push Ireland into touch. This formation of Van der Fleer surrounded by three players however is a genius counter for South Africa's mall defence as this allows Van der Fleer's teammates to steer him. While I'm not 100% confident in this grounding the referees were, getting Ireland their first try and wow what an accomplishment it was to get through South Africa's mall defence. Ireland are also on the scoreboard just moments later thanks to a wonder try from from Mac Hansen, who in an ideal world will win World Rugby Breakthrough Player of the Year. The build-up begins with Ireland back in South Africa's half, with James Ryan somehow acting as halfback. Ryan goes wide to Porter, while Jasper Visa sprints out of line to make the tackle. Though the camera angle makes the pass look a wee bit forward, Porter is still able to work it away to Finlay Bealham as the ball has backwards momentum. With James Ryan's presence as the acting halfback pre Previously, this allows for Jamison Gibson Park to be freed up to scan the field. Bealham now almost acts as a blocking mechanism so that Stephen Kitsoff can't get in Jamison Gibson Park's face. With Bealham initially hiding Gibson Park from the Springbok defence line, we suddenly see in the wide shot that Damien Dialendi has overcommitted his defensive position. He's now marking Sexton without a teammate to mark Gibson Park, who is positioned in the 10 channel. What follows is simply beautiful rugby that I don't think the coach has pre planned. Kitsoff and Marks are heading back in order to form the next ruck, while an offside Peter Stiff Dutoy is the likeliest player to Mark Byrne, who is out of frame. Gibson Park knows Ireland's don't need to worry for Dutoy, so makes a pass any decent halfback would. With Dutoy now side on, Aronza is now forced to bite in and stop Byrne from offloading. Aronza pays for this error big time, as Byrne's pass to Hugo Keenan results in Cheslin Colby marking three opponents all on his own. It's always going to be a try from here, 25 year old Jimmy Bryan makes the correct call in debut, passing to Mac Hansen who scores. By the 67th minute of the match, South Africa was still yet to fire a shot, and after a wee 15 minute ball fest, we finally see them score a try from a bit of a fluke. We're now going to highlight the spring box in this freeze frame that I've got for you guys, because the South African spine has done a brilliant job at stretching their attacking pattern. However, as we zoom in a little, we see that it's probably missing the correct players to fire the ball off off to Aronza, who is in a perfect position to score. Foree's dummy line doesn't put off Robert Balakuni because Foree is between Balakuni and Sexton. If a back was in Quagga Smith's place, this still wouldn't matter too much, as South Africa are still effectively in a 3 on 2 situation. Far gone from his sevens days however though, um, Smith keeps running after collecting Dialendi's pass while he's still a very strong runner, he no longer has the instincts to make this pass after so many years in 15s. With Balakuni still not marking Aronza, Smith has suckered him in long enough to make the pass 10 metres out, but because he's a flanker he waits too late and the space gets shut down very well by the incredible Irish defence. Luckily, Foree's dummy line position also allows him to be in the perfect position to clean 
the ruck. Fauri is able to stop the turnover being won, so South Africa recycle the ball with Damien Dialendi at halfback, and they're able to improvise a little bit after this move fails. Franco Mostud eventually spots a weak shoulder after a few passes. He passes Kalen Doris to ground the ball and score his third test try. Kurt Lee Aronza is also able to score a nice try at the end of the test, as the Springboks are under advantage. De Klerk does the right thing under advantage to send South Africa in this direction, passing to Cock, who is the head of a three-man diamond pod. With Balakuni and O'Brien drawn in, Cock turns around to pass to LaRue, proving that at their core, these two teams are using very different variations of a very similar attacking structure. Balakuni recovers brilliantly to take LaRue down on the tackle, but with Eben Etzebeth having been on Cog's inside at the aforementioned pod, Etzebeth is able to work around as a ruck cleaning option for LaRue. As Etzebeth is marked by Johnny Sexton, who's a 10, LaRue offloads from the ground, knowing for a fact that a very heavy Eben Etzebeth will indeed cross the gain line. With no defenders outside Balakunia, however, Ireland's don't have any numbers out wide for the winger who is now getting up to his feet. Edzabeth puts a big fend on Mac Hansen, with Hugo Keenan finally reaching his defensive position. Though Keenan has now done so, he attempts to stop Edzabeth's offload, which he can never do considering he's only 6 foot 1, while Edzabeth is 6 foot 8. Aronza dots the ball down after collecting Edzabeth's offload, running in unmarked. As we dive into the match stats, we can really see where the differences were made as well considering the final score was 19 to 16. An incredibly tight and uh, incredibly entertaining test. Um, as we can see though, South Africa had the majority of possession. It's starting to become a bit of a running theme that this Irish side can win without the majority of the possession against their opponents, while um, South Africa had a wee bit more territory than they did possession, proving that the Irish defence is just a well-oiled machine that's been brilliantly worked on. We're now heading over to the tackle success, and um, it's indeed reflected by the percentage of Ireland's tackling, whereas South Africa's 79% is not the flashest to look at. Um, neither is the goal success for either team, particularly though, um, especially South Africa. Um, I think that this goal kicking percentage may hurt um, maybe the emotions of Damien Willems a, a fair bit, as he is still 24. He's still complete, he's still not completely rather finding his groove as an international 10 as he's played most of his career for the Stormers as a fullback, so I'm questioning if he's really the proper option over there. Interestingly though, with the ruck success, South Africa dominated that, Ireland still won the test. Goodness me, you don't see that very often. Um, line out success as well, phenomenal for both teams, both only miss one line out, and the scrums 100% on their feed each for both teams. You can see again though, um, as I mentioned with the tackle percentage, um, the penalties given away probably played their factor as well with South Africa conceding 13 including the card, while Ireland's conceded 10 penalties. As mentioned before, it is time for South Africa to really just give a new young 10 a decent crack at things rather than use a makeshift 10 out of a fullback as the All Blacks have occasionally done so with Damien McKenzie. Um, they've done so with Jaden Hendrickser as the 9, so why can they not do that with the 10? Um, South Africa's pack is starting to age a fair bit, so um, I'm really hoping that Jacques Nienaba can get out of the, um, I guess, writer's block he's almost having as a coach and come up with some new plays to utilise for the World Cup. I do wonder if they're starting to hold some stuff back and fingers crossed Ireland aren't peaking early because um, apart from the wee defensive lapses that I mentioned before when I was looking at South Africa's attack, um, I can't really say a bad thing about their performance at all in this test, especially considering um, I didn't think they would be able to win this, so well done to them. I didn't pick up on any um, new tactics in particular that they were using, but let's hope that this is um, just a wee um, refresher as to 
what Test Rugby is like, especially considering they'll be playing South Africa in the pool stage of the 2023 World Cup, and we'll start to see some new ideas come to the forefront for the 2023 Six Nations. Um, unlike the 2018 Ireland side, not really bringing anything new to the 2019 Six Nations. I have utmost faith in Andy Farrell though, as he seems to be learning from a lot of the errors that Joe Schmidt made in his reign as the Ireland coach, though Joe Schmidt did so many absolute wonders for the country. Um, Jacques Nienaba is pretty much in the opposite area to Andy Farrell as Razzie Erasmus, like the team has stagnated a wee little bit, whereas Ireland have kept evolving and I feel that if Nienaba didn't um, kind of get stuck in his ways, these tactics that we're seeing from Ireland playing all this expansive rugby, we could actually see from South Africa because goodness me, they have the talent to do that. Um, that's probably all I've got to say for this video guys, um, so thank you very much for watching. You can go and follow me over on Instagram at the Black Jersey, and if you're a new viewer, make sure you, um, <laughs> do as I said at the start of the video, um, subscribe to me and like this video and um, of course you can visit me over on Twitter and on Patreon if you want to um, get a bit more insight into the kind of stuff I do and um, here are a few of my hot takes. Thank you once again for watching this video guys, much appreciated and I'm going to see you next time. Cheers.